several people on social media asked me to comment on an incredible scientific publication suggesting the possibility of a vaccine to treat multiple sclerosis. Now, this has been tried before. In fact, the legendary multiple sclerosis researcher, Dr. Leslie P. Weiner, and also one of my former mentors at USC, developed a T-cell vaccine to treat MS in the 1990s, but it was unsuccessful. Now, this new vaccine technology uses a lipid nanoparticle containing messenger RNA similar to the vaccines developed by Pfizer BioNTech and Moderna to treat COVID-19 and they successfully reduced disability in a mouse model of MS. So today I'm going to show you their data and the potential application of this vaccine technology to humans with MS in the future. Let's have some fun. I want to give credit to first author Christina Cranky. This is a tremendous publication. She seems to be a private person, and I admit this picture may not be her real picture, possibly just someone else with the same name. But anyways, the concept here is they use a lipid nanoparticle which encapsulates and protects messenger RNA, which would otherwise rapidly degrade. mRNA is the intermediary in the cell between DNA and proteins, and so it enters the cell and causes the translation of proteins. Now, now for the COVID-19 vaccines, that protein the mRNA codes for is the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19. But in this case, the mRNA expresses a different protein called MOG, which is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, one of the key proteins that forms myelin, the fatty sheath of the nerve fiber that is attacked in multiple sclerosis. And instead of trying to induce immunity, we're trying to induce immune tolerance. In other words, your immune system sees this protein and eventually gets used to it and stops attacking it. Similar to the concept of allergy shots and also the same reason you give a young child peanut butter to try to prevent a peanut allergy. And it's also very similar to how the drug glutirimer acetate for MS, trade names Glatopa and Copaxone, works. Now in this study, they use a specific mouse model of MS experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis called MOG-EAE. And so they actually inject the MOG protein into the peritoneum along with another other immune adjuvants, and it's quite a complicated process, in order to induce inflammation in the brain and spine. So this really isn't multiple sclerosis, it's encephalomyelitis, a disease sort of similar to MS, but it's really good as a study for preliminary data that can in the future be applied to humans. But anyway, because they're using the same antigen and the same antigen for immune tolerance, you may be a little bit skeptical, but they address that potential pitfall later on, as you'll see. So first they did a few safety studies because you don't want a vaccine that stimulates the immune system. Of course, that could potentially make multiple sclerosis worse, and you don't want a vaccine that weakens the immune system. So they did an assay to look at the response of different types of white blood cells. And by the way, they identify this particular lipid nanoparticle with the Greek letter psi, so this is the relevant treatment, the nanoparticle with the MOG containing messenger RNA, excuse me, MOG coding messenger RNA. And you can see there's no increased immune response compared to control, regardless of whether you look at CD4 or CD8 positive T cells, B cells, or natural killer cells. Whereas if you look at a immunogenic containing lipoparticle, you can see a significant immune response. So this is a non-immunogenic lipid nanoparticle. Also, they looked at the immune system and they found that it does not diminish antibody response to the flu vaccine. For instance, if you look at the product in question in light blue, compared to the same lipid nanoparticle not containing mRNA coding for MOG or just saline, it did not diminish antibody response. So this product does not weaken the immune system. But how exactly would this vaccine help people with MS? Well, we think MS may have to do with dysfunction of the regulation of the immune system controlled by regulatory T cells that sort of check on other cells in the immune system. And so they designed designed an assay to look at regulatory T cells in the spleen, and those who got the treatment seemed to have an increase in these regulatory T cells specifically recognizing MOG, whereas the overall helper T cells marked by CD4, which is simply a cell surface protein marking 
overall helper T cells were unchanged regardless of whether or not they received the vaccine. Also, the phenotype of the CD4 positive T cells or helper T cells was different. You can see those who were treated with the lipid nanoparticle containing messenger RNA coding from MOG had a different phenotype compared to those who received the same lipid nanoparticle containing irrelevant messenger RNA. And you can see the different types of white blood cells. And if you look on this slide, you can see those who received the vaccine had increased effector regulatory T cells, whereas the Th17 and Th1 cells, which are known to be associated with inflammation in multiple sclerosis, were decreased compared to those who received the other lipid nanoparticle not containing messenger RNA coding from R. Okay, but what happened to the mice? Did the vaccine actually prevent disability? Well, of course it did, or else I wouldn't be doing the video. So it's well known that disability often develops after induction of EAE between about 10 and 15 days after induction. So they gave the treatment at day 7 and day 10, and they looked at a clinical score, the EAE score. Higher score means greater disability. Zero means no changes. Three means complete paralysis of the hind limbs. And you can see that those received receiving the two placebos, those who got control and those receiving the lipid nanoparticle, both became significantly disabled, whereas those who received the vaccine were completely fine. None of the mice had any disability. It was essentially 100% effective. And obviously, it's not the lipid nanoparticle, it's the messenger RNA inside. Now, they did the same thing in a different way, but they waited until the mice developed some disability. So they didn't give the treatment immediately. They waited until they reached an EDAE score of 1 or 2. And you can see now the treatment was less effective, although it still reduced disability compared to controls, and they recovered much better to an average score around 1, which is just a limp tail, but normal movement of the fore and hind limbs. And perhaps even more impressive are pictures of the pathological sections of the spinal cords of these mice stained with Luxol Fast Blue, which stains myelin. And you can see the gray matter on the inside and the myelin on the outside stained blue. And those receiving the vaccine, the myelin seems to be intact. But in both of the control groups, there's severe damage indicated by severe loss of blue stain. Okay, but Dr. Bieber, these researchers are effectively cheating. They knew the immune system was going to attack MOG in advance, and they induced immune tolerance against that specific antigen. We don't have that luxury in MS because MS is polyantigenic. There's not just one protein being attacked. This isn't myasthenia gravis or neuromyelitis optica. Well, that's true, but the researchers accounted for that because there's more than one way to induce experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, and they tried to induce EAE with with a different protein. So this time they use something called PLP, proteolipid protein, one of the other myelin antigens. So now we're looking at PLP EAE. Does our vaccine still work in PLP EAE? And the answer is yes. So these mice received the MOG vaccine and they still did better than those receiving controls. But interestingly, if we used a similar vaccine where the lipid nanoparticle contained messenger RNA for PLP, it was slightly more effective. And this demonstrates the idea of bystander tolerance, because even if one antigen is the initial site of immune attack, there's breakdown of the blood-brain barrier and exposure of other antigens to the immune system. So in reality, even if we have the antigen wrong, there's this idea of bystander tolerance, and it still works, maybe is slightly less effective. And if you look at the pathological sections, you can see that the myelin is intact. Again, this is PLP EAE, and those who received both the messenger RNA containing MOG or coding from MOG, lipid nanoparticle, and PLP, but not in those who had the lipid nanoparticle containing irrelevant messenger RNA. Very impressive. So in theory, in theory, if they could develop this into an actual treatment for multiple sclerosis, it could be something along the lines of a super copaxone, something that works in the same way, doesn't suppress the immune system, is relatively safe, and hopefully fairly effective. Although I have to say this is extremely preliminary. After all, experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis is very different from multiple sclerosis, and mice are very different from humans. In fact, there's a famous quote in multiple sclerosis research, which is, 
everything works in EA. So it's hard to get too excited about this type of study, though it's very interesting and I'd love to see where they can take it and possibly study it in other animal models and maybe even a small pilot study in humans with MS. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think this type of research has potential and do you have any suggestions for future videos?